Will Murray, Nine News. SCAD is a deadly heart condition that primarily affects young women and Sydney researchers are racing against the clock to find out why. An Orange resident is taking part in their world first global study, hoping to find a cure. Carly is not your expected heart attack patient. She's young, fit and has few risk factors. It was just like pressure and like Bob said someone had kicked me in the ribs. In 2016 she suffered from an episode of spontaneous coronary artery dissection known as SCAD, a condition where a tear in an artery prevents blood flow to the heart muscle and in 90% of cases it affects young women. It probably accounts for 25% of heart attacks in women less than 50 years of age and is the commonest cause of a heart attack in women who are pregnant. At first, the 36-year-old was reluctant to go to hospital and was shocked to learn that she had a heart condition. It's this stoic attitude that means SCAD can go undiagnosed. Often women, when they get these symptoms, they just attribute it to being tired or overworked and they worry about their family rather than themselves. Now the Victor Chang Cardiac Research Institute is trying to find out what causes the condition and Carly from Orange is one of 330 women in Australia taking part in their global study. The scary part about SCAD is that in 30% of cases, patients will have a second heart attack. But now new research by the Institute has identified a genetic marker of the disease. While it's still early days, it's hoped this breakthrough may prevent second episodes of SCAD from occurring again. Carly has everything to live for, a young son and a new career in childcare. She encourages other SCAD patients to take part in the research. I'm so happy that the research is there and that I could have contributed and it wasn't hard, I just got a DNA test. Amy Clements, Nine News. Ahead in the news, the Raiders cling to their number five spot on the NRL ladder, but can they stay there? And on the chopping block, confirmation Paul McGregor's days in the top job at the Dragons could be numbered. With their only two tries scored in the second half, the Canberra Raiders admit they got off to a slow start in their loss to the Penrith Panthers. The club knowing they need to be quicker off the blocks if they want to stay in the top eight. The Brisbane Broncos are a bruised bunch. Contracts being questioned over bubble breaches and only one win since the season resumed. Over Brisbane by 28 to 10. That could be a, a driving motivation for them to come down and um, obviously try and beat us down in Canberra. The Raiders won't be underestimating the Queensland side though as both teams look to rewrite round 13 losses. Hopefully they win next week, not this week. Josh Papali lending support to longtime friend Anthony Milford, checking in after his most recent injury setback. I'm always texting Milf and he's, uh, he's always texting me after good wins or bad losses and uh, yeah, obviously he, he's been doing it tough up there. But the niceties end there. The Green Machine promising a bigger and better start than last week. We've watched the reviews and watched the previews this week and I'm sure you'll see a better side this week. The side training today, hooker Saliva Havili working through a tricep strain, hoping to be right for the clash. He seems to be all right, he's in the gym and stuff, so I'm hoping he'll be ready and fit for Saturday. <laughs> Our reporter Aggie Bradshaw is live in Canberra. Aggie, is Saliva Havili fit to play on Saturday? He is Natasha. He underwent rehab on that tricep this week and has been given the all clear to play. It's a massive relief for the club. They cannot afford to add another player to the injury list, with Saliva Havili actually brought in a month ago to replace an injured Josh Hodgson. So the starting lineup remains unchanged. Some consistency for the Canberra Raiders heading into the round 14 clash. Thanks, Aggie. Paul McGregor's days at the Dragons could be numbered, with the club confirming his job as coach is up for review during next week's board meeting. The players have today told Nine News they're taking responsibility for the situation ahead of their clash against Parramatta this weekend. James Wilson has the latest. 
With their season slipping away, Dragons players are now coming to grips with a new crisis unfolding at the club. Coach Paul McGregor is once again in the firing line with his job up for review at a board meeting next Tuesday. Whatever happens, we're going to have to come together and, um, you know, if Mary's here, we'll, we'll keep playing for him. And, um, you know, obviously, if he's not, it'll be sad. Players arrived at training this afternoon telling waiting media Mary had their full support, but behind closed doors drama has plagued the side with a number of high profile exits and stars signing banished to the sideline. Obviously it's disappointing to have those conversations externally, but as a playing group, um, we fully support Mary and you know this came up early in the season and the board decided to keep him on and showed faith and um, nothing's really changed from our perspectives. Today's developments only add more pressure ahead of their game against Parramatta this Friday. A must win if they're to make the finals and now to keep their coach's job. You look at the best teams in the comp, the teams are in the top four. That's the difference. They've been able to put it together for longer periods of time and uh, that's where we've struggled this season, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, definitely on, on the players there. The question remains, if not Mary, then who? Assistant coach Shane Flanagan would be an obvious choice for the club, but he's banned from the top job until 2022. In the meantime, Dean Young is expected to take over as interim coach. We'll have more details from a Dragons insider at six. James Wilson with that report. To Rugby Union, Brumbies players have donned Canberra Club rugby jerseys at training to show their support for sides that currently are unable to play due to COVID-19 restrictions. It comes as the Brumbies use their bye week break to refresh ahead of their clash with the Waratahs. Yeah, after a tough loss, you can either go one way or the other and usually um, you know, light lightening the mood is the best way. They take on the Tars on August 22nd. Coming up in Nine News, Gavin Morris will be up next with all your local weather details. How do you tell three? Now time to catch up on the latest weather details around New South Wales and the ACT. And it's good evening to Gavin Morris. Good evening, hope you're well on this Tuesday. Taking a look at conditions today, relatively fine, relatively calm as well. Temperatures maxing out in the mid to high teens right along the coast. Inland across the plains, we had temperatures maxing out at around 16, 17, so a little bit milder at the moment. A lot of cloud moving in across western central New South Wales throughout today. The first of three fronts that are going to clip in across the southeast, mostly affecting Victoria as far as rain is concerned but we've got a little on the way right throughout the far southern reaches of the state, just running right along the Murray. There's the second system and then the third on the way as well as the remainder of the nation sits under fine dry skies and that milder air mass is moving in across the state. So taking a look at coastal conditions tomorrow, that's going to allow temperatures to rise into the high teens, remaining mostly fine, but it is going to be cloud affected. Jumping over the mountain areas, it is going to be cloudy and we've got some rain that is going to reach the western slopes and the tablelands and right throughout the Monero as well as the capital with only tops of 13. For the Riverina, it's a similar story. The cloud arriving fairly early, mostly overcast, and then we've got widespread light periods of rain on the way, which overall is good news and a little developing also right throughout the central west plains. You can see the forecast numbers, though, are going to be very small, just a few millimetres in it right across the tablelands and blue mountains as well. Have yourself a good night. Thanks, Gav. We'll see you tomorrow night. But before we go, these two kangaroos decided a blizzard was the perfect time to duke it out. The animal version of a snowball fight happened at Mount Jerome near the southern tablelands and lasted seven minutes. As you can see, there were no snow angels trading punches and kicks to decide who will be king of the mountain this winter. And that's Nine News Local for this Tuesday, the 11th of August. Peter Overton is up next with your 6pm bulletin. I'm Natasha Soper. Enjoy your evening. Good night. Tonight, breaking news from Parramatta. COVID-19 forces the shutdown of another Western Sydney school, while Liverpool Hospital becomes a new hotspot. Melbourne's mask madness. Chaos on the streets as the Premier cops are grilling over hotel quarantine. Two men stand trial for the public execution of bikey Mick Howie. Did a fishing trip lead to murder? An angle grinder, a wheelie bin, crates and a crowbar. Borkham Hills crooks stop at nothing to get what they want. President, we have a problem. Donald Trump whisked to safety after a shooting at the White House. 
And is Paul McGregor about to coach his last game for the Dragons? One of rugby league's leading figures says no. This is Nine News with Peter Overton.